So, Sonokinetics Indy, um, in the manual, it describes itself as exquisite intimacy. And I would agree that the sound is very intimate and um, beautiful. So, how can we use these phrases in a more effective way? I think everybody agrees that they're beautiful, but uh, sometimes the question is, how can I use very um, distinct, beautiful phrases in my own compositions? If we play one here, if we say, go over to this one and listen to its demo, or this one, They're very distinct musical phrases played in a very passionate way with live players and that's what all makes it so great. But immediately when you play it and use it in your composition, one's going to pick it out, hear it, and how, you know, you would need a lot more to be able to, you know, ideally I would want to have 10 different versions of this one phrase up here, you know. So how can we use a phrase library like this more effective and get way more out of one phrase musically, make it more musical, be able to conduct it and make it fit in a very musical way with all the other phrases and play it live. And that's what this video is all about, how to get more out of indie and how to discover some of the hidden or not so well features of this uh, plugin. So we'll be looking at things like the uh, phrase follow or phrase continue. We're going to try to explain that in a musical way. Bar syncing, what that actually means to a composer. Um, Crossfading and offset. Again, what does that, how does that really apply to making music with this? And we're going to also look at the harmonic shift. Is that just you know are you expanding when you play a chord is that shifting from that specific chord is it um, are you taking adding to the chords or inverting the chords what really is harmonic shifting and the last feature is highly unknown because I have not found one video on this specific feature and how to use it and I've looked for it Phrase link. What is that all about? But before we get to phrase link, and what a great little feature that is, we have to understand the basics first. So in the next segment, we're going to dive in and start to look at these features. All right, so to get where we're going, we need to start at the beginning and understand what's going on here. So to do that, let's we go to the manual and we see that Indy was recorded in 4-4 uh, time at 100 beats per minute. And of course, you don't have to stick to that as um, its intelligent beat mapping will adhere to whatever your DAW is set up to, to a pretty good extent. So it, you can change the beats per minute in your DAW and it should sync to that fairly well. But if you want to get the most realistic, pure sound out of it, you would probably be really close to 100 beats per minute, 4-4 four, four time, just for the sake of trying to get the most realistic uh, original recordings out of it. So we also know from the manual that um, the quartet, so if we go click on this, the spring quartet is four players, obviously. The ensemble is 13. Uh, the wood ensemble is seven and the brass players are five. So, okay, we understand that a little better. And if we go and listen to our little demonstration uh, phrase, which is a cello and a uh, viola playing, we see a one bar clip of that recording. Now, this is something that um, people need to realize, I think, and maybe you don't un uh, realize just because I certainly didn't. I, when I first opened this up, I thought, okay, let's listen to the phrase. 
and that's you know you click on the demo and you hear a one bar phrase of the uh, instruments and if you, you think to yourself well that's it that's the phrase but it's actually they played four bars of this and you can prove it by uh, if you click on it and go to the score you can see that it is indeed the uh, cello and viola and they're playing four bars of a repeating pattern but they're actually playing that repetition four times so you're getting a unique play four times it's not just a midi repeat and that's very important for where we're going to go next so knowing that we set up our DAW at 100 beats per minute four four time we realize that we don't have just one bar just repeating we have a session that actually they played this this repeating uh, phrase four times. They actually played it four times. And to prove it again, let's go to the DAW. And we can see that we have it set up for six bars. And we're going to render that out in audio. And the way I did it is just drew a MIDI note that holds down this key. And as you know, the basics of uh, how this interface works. You hold down a, a chord with your left hand in the blues and you pick a phrase with your right hand. So we just did that in MIDI and let's just play that. If you listen very carefully, you can hear little changes in that. So you know they played it actually for four bars. But again, just to make sure, we rendered it out. And if we look at the audio recording, you can indeed see that uh, the fourth bar right here, that's the actual recording. So it's four bars of actual playing. And five and six are starting to repeat. Okay, so that's just good to know because... Um, if you look at some of the features that we're going to talk about next, uh, you'll see why that becomes more and more important. So again, another thing to uh, realize here with this recording that we did is that the attack actually starts the first beat in. So that's also good to know if you're going to try to sync this up in a, ver a very rhythmic way in your, uh, in your composition knowing where the first attack actually starts. So we'll get a little bit more into this as we dive into how to actually play it in your DAW and how to do, make some recordings using MIDI and how all this information is uh, worth knowing. So that'll be in the next clip here.